Update. Am I the a-hole for telling my friend that she should have seen her husband and her friend's affair coming? Original post. Background. I, 35 female, was friends with Julia, 35 female, and Alex, 34 female. We have been friends since college, but our tiny group expanded from 3 to 7. This story is about Julia and Alex. Two years ago, we all came to know that Alex was having an affair with a married man. Her excuse was that he was unhappy, that is why he is seeking outside validation. I advised her to stop it. This is not healthy because he will not leave his wife. She didn't listen, rather accused me of being a bad friend. All of my friends were against it, but to them, it was not my monkey, not my circus. So I contacted the wife and told her everything. I knew who the wife was because the married man once introduced us. And everyone in my friend group turned against me, especially Julia, because she thinks I betrayed my friends. She stopped talking to me because if I can betray a close friend of mine, then I can betray her as well. Alex was heartbroken because the married man decided he wanted to work on his marriage, so he broke things off with Alex. Julia was with Alex and I was shunned from our group. What happened now? A few weeks ago, I got a call from Julia. She was crying and telling me that Alex betrayed her. She was having an affair with her husband and that she is heartbroken because she has supported her and this is how she repays her. Even her friend group is divided. I was angry at that moment. I mean, she ignored me for two years, badmouthed me, said that I was wrong. I literally warned her that Alex was toxic. So I told her that she should have expected this from Alex. I mean, did she really think that she will show loyalty towards you when she already did something immoral before? I knew the moment she made excuses of having an affair with a married man, her morals were compromised. I'm not religious, but I do have a minimum respect towards other people and their feelings. And suffice to say, I am not surprised she went after her husband. I do think I went too far, because some of my other friends said I was too harsh on her. Even if what I said was the truth, I should have been more sensitive because she is going through a divorce. I do sympathize with Julia, but I also feel like as friends sometimes we need to tell them the harsh truth. I know I said all of this when I was angry, but a part of me says she needed to hear that. Was I wrong? Now for the comments before reading the update. Not the a-hole. She's responsible for ostracizing you from the group because she'd rather support the cheater then comes to you for sympathy when that backfires on her. You're better off without these friends. Not the a-hole. What you tolerate is what you are. Cheating undermines everyone and makes cheater apologists for those who know but do nothing. You have been consistent to your standards. Those who criticize it are really critiquing their own ethics. I would say no. They both shamed you and stopped being friends with you because you expressed your dislike of cheating. She is not entitled to your support and friendship because she is now facing the consequences of her own decisions. I feel horrible for her, truly. I cannot imagine a worse betrayal. But this is why not being a hypocrite is good. The first betrayed wife probably felt the same way and where was her empathy then? I don't believe in shaming people, but I also don't believe that when someone is doing something egregious, sleeping with a married man or woman, that the people around them have the obligation to keep silent and give tacit consent. Those who lie with dogs will wake up with fleas. She supported a person who started an affair, and surprise, surprise, the person started an affair with her partner. Frankly, if your friends are doing something really crappy and you out there crappiness, that's not betrayal. That's having a sense of decency. I bet Julia had no tears for the first woman whose relationship Alex helped wreck. Not the a-hole. Not the a-hole. Just had this conversation with someone yesterday. There's a woman at work who's married with three late teenage kids, has been having affairs, and her husband finally found out. He's divorcing her. However, divorce proceedings just started. But homegirl started up an affair with a married man at work. For a solid week, they were at it. She's everywhere bragging about them doing the deed. Even tells her husband how much better this married dude is and how happy they are going to be together seeing as she's about to be free and this married guy is going to leave his wife and family too. Two days later, 
married Lyft, walks past her desk in the morning at work and tells her he's done with her. Says she needs to stay away from him, then cuts off all communication. Now she's heartbroken and hurting over his rejection and crying everywhere, and current almost ex-husband just put her out of the house. Now for the update. Update. I've read many of your comments. First of all, I want to clear this thing out that I do not regret telling the wife about the affair. I do not think I did the wrong thing. My friend was doing something bad and psychopathic, in my opinion. She happily contributed to destroying a family knowing the man she was dating was a married man. I know the blame should be on him, but she also needs to take accountability of her actions. If I was getting cheated on, I would want to know. So I guess the wife also wanted to know. I know a lot of you have shamed me, but just know I do not care. I was not the affair partner, so why should I take the blame? I was simply a messenger. Now to the actual update. I did speak to Julia and said that I was sorry. I shouldn't have punched her down when she is already going through some shit. I did not want to add to it. I know a lot of you have told me to just cut her off, but I realized it was too harsh on her even if what she did two years ago was wrong. But she came to me because she needed a friend. I can sympathize with her in her tough times. She just went on and on about how she felt betrayed by Alex when she has always defended her, even when her own parents disowned her. Just out of curiosity, I asked her if she has plans to divorce her husband or work things out. She said she is going for a divorce. Her husband is begging her for another chance and even said he will cut off all contacts with Alex along with the offer of opening their marriage on her end, but she is headstrong on her divorce. She did ask for my forgiveness and I do forgive her, but I still do not want anything to do with her. I do feel sorry for her and hope she finds peace, but our friendship will never be restored to its own glory. She said that she understands and this is probably her karma and God is punishing her, she is quite religious. That's the end. I hope she takes him to the cleaners and from the grapevines I heard that Alex has been shunned from my former friend group because now they are afraid she might go after their husbands. And as for Alex, I do believe she is a psychopath who enjoys breaking up families. I do not think any amount of exposing will work on her because she has no shame. She deliberately goes after married and committed men. And I am glad I cut ties with her way before she could get to me. And that's it. Have a great life and stay away from all the Alexes of this world. Story 2. Update. My family wants me to forgive my brother after he tried to rape my fiancé. Original post. I, 27 male, met my fiancé, 25 female, almost 7 years ago when we were both studying at college. We met through mutual friends and about one year later we started dating. When she was introduced to my family, everyone was delighted with her, even my mother, who tends to be somewhat reserved with foreigners. No, both my mother and father are migrants, and since arrived in the country where we live, they have always stayed close to the local community, so they are generally very reserved with anyone who is not from our community. It sounds racist, but it's not. At this point, I just mentioned that my brother, 29 male, before the incident, he was my superhero. I always admired him because he never was intimidated by the local children and because he was always very protective of me and our sister, 22 female. He always reminded us that we should never look down just because someone tried to annoy us and that we have just as much right to live here as anyone. And when I introduced him to my girlfriend, they became good friends. Time passed and my girlfriend was quite close to my family, especially my siblings. Given the closeness to my family, it was usual for her to hang out with the other of my relatives. She would go shopping with my sister and mother, play billiards with me and my cousins, and was at every party my family organized. It was at one of these parties in which me and my family ended up very drunk, to the point that I ended up sleeping on the floor of my parents' living room. When the party ended, my girlfriend was behaving very weird, and when I asked what was going on, she told me, I think your brother tried to kiss me. The surprise that she gave me when hearing those words was so great that any effect of the alcohol disappeared, and I asked her to tell me everything that had happened. 
She told me that several of the guests went to the roof to drink up there to feel the wind or something like that. Little by little, they all left until, in the end, it was just she and my brother that were left up there. They drank a while more, and while they were talking, she noticed that he was staring at her, and out of nowhere, he bent down trying to kiss her, but she was faster and dodged it. The atmosphere became very uncomfortable after that, and she left. When she finished telling me what happened, I took her to her house, and later on, I spoke with my brother and asked him to clarify the whole story. He basically told me the same story, but from his point of view, he apologized and said he was so drunk that he wasn't thinking and that he apologized for doing that. Just remembering that conversation makes my blood boil because at that moment, I thought it had been only a minor incident, something that could be solved with dialogue and establishing some limits. I could never think about what was going to happen next. After what happened at that party, the relationship between my brother and I was uncomfortable. We almost never spoke, and when we did, it was as polite as possible, almost as if we were strangers. The only person who knew what had happened besides the three of us was my younger sister, because on one occasion when she and my girlfriend were talking, she asked if she knew why my brother and I had become distant. From what she told her the story, my girlfriend and I decided to not comment on the rest of my family because we didn't want the relationship to fracture further. After a few months, my family organized a party where they invited a lot of people, friends, family, and people from our community. It was at that party where my girlfriend and my brother met again. At that moment, I thought that enough time had passed since the kiss incident and that it could be the first step for things to return to the normal. At some point during the party, I lost track of my girlfriend and I started looking for her. I looked for her for a while without seeing her so I assumed that maybe she was with my sister. But something passed through my head that I decided to look upstairs. While I was going up the stairs, I started to hear some strange noises in one of the rooms. And when I opened the door, my brother was pushing my girlfriend against the bed, covering her mouth and trying to put his hand under her dress while she was trying to fight back. I didn't think twice about it. And as soon as I saw them, I pounced on my brother and started beating him. My girlfriend left the room as quickly as she could and went downstairs to ask for help. When my father and uncles came up, I was still beating the crap out of my brother. His face was full of blood, as was my knuckles. My father was the one who had to separate us, but I kept insulting him and hitting him. In the end, he was able to separate us, and then he took me out of the room while my uncles checked how bad my brother was. Outside the room, my father asked me what the hell happened to make me act like that. It took me a while to be able to formulate the words, but finally I told him that I had just seen that my brother had tried to abuse my girlfriend. My dad, I know, was in shock for a while. He sat on the floor and put his hand on his forehead and was completely silent for about 10 minutes until my uncles called him because they were going to take my brother to the hospital. After they took my brother, I went to look for my girlfriend and found her talking to my sister about what just had happened. I said goodbye to my sister and we left. All the way to our house, she couldn't stop crying. She was confused and angry, and by the time we got home, she kept crying until she fell asleep. And that was her routine for a couple of days until little by little, she could talk again. In those days, my family kept informing me of my condition of my brother. I had broken his nose and dislocated his jaw. My mother was the one in denial, incredulous that her son was capable of something like that, But I didn't think much about it because in the end, each person reacts differently. And also to a certain point, I understood why my mom was trying to explain my brother's actions. The last thing I heard from him was that after he left the hospital, everyone turned their backs on him for what he did. They fired him from his work and left town. The following weeks, I cut off almost any contact with the outside world and focused on helping my girlfriend. To say the least, she was handling the situation as best she could. She was still very scared about what had happened and had no energy at all. But after almost a month of being home, she had to go to work. But she returned after a few hours because she told me that she couldn't stop feeling threatened and that she was in danger and that at any moment someone was going to try to do something bad to her. When she calmed down, I suggested that the best thing to do would be to seek professional help. And although the idea did not seem the best to her at first, 
She ended up accepting it and it really was the best for the both of us. Right after therapy began, she began to improve. And after almost two months in therapy, her therapist suggested that perhaps I should start taking some sessions too. Not only so that I could fully understand her therapist's situation and to help her properly, but also because she told her therapist that since the incident, I had almost no contact with anyone other than her and that I had never really spoken about how I felt. At first it sounded strange, but I was not going to question the recommendation of her therapist. Even though she told me that, I was only going because I thought I would be able to let out the little things that had accumulated. I can remember that in the first session, it ended in a mess. I felt so angry, not only with my brother, but also with myself. I was repressing what I felt because I didn't stop blaming myself for not having noticed my brother's behavior and above all, I felt powerless because I couldn't protect her like I always said that I would and that he was afraid that something like that could happen to him again and I couldn't help it. After several sessions, things finally started looking better. We both improved our mental state, even decided to take self-defense classes and a few weeks ago, I proposed to her. When I told my family, everyone congratulated me, but my mother remained a little quiet and when no one was looking, she asked me if we could talk alone later. When we were alone, she told me that she was very happy for me and for her, but that she needed to tell me something. That's when she told me that she had been in contact with my brother since the pandemic began. She told me that my brother looked for her to find out if she and my father were okay that if he could help them in any way and that he felt sorry for what he had done. My mother kept telling me things about him until she told me something that almost makes me yell at her. She told me, I think it's time for you to forgive your brother. Before she could continue, I left the room, took my keys and went home. When I arrived, I told my fiance what my mother told me and she was as upset as I was at my mother's words. And I couldn't believe she said that. The following days, along with the congratulations on my engagement, I also received questions about my brother and then if we had spoken again, if we were ready to reconnect and things like that. I tried to ignore these situations as much as possible until four days ago. My mother called me saying that she had told my brother about my engagement and that he was coming to town next week because he wanted to talk to me. I argued with my mom because she had no right to tell him something like that. I hung up on her and have had no contact with her since. After that, some relatives have told me that maybe my mother is right and that I should give my brother a second chance. I reached my limit yesterday afternoon when my father called me to tell me that I had to be a good brother and at least try. Even my father asked me to forgive my brother for what he did. Suddenly, everyone forgot what he did. That four years is enough to forget about what he did and I honestly can't understand why they would think something like that. I honestly don't know what to think about my family right now. Just that I'm upset with them and I definitely don't want to see my brother again. I wrote here because I needed to vent and my therapist's appointment was postponed and I needed to vent. Maybe Reddit is not the most professional choice, but I needed to get my feelings out somehow and I appreciate whoever is reading this. Now for the updates. Update 1. Hi everyone. Well, I really never expected to update, or at least not so soon. The moment I posted, I was doing it because I really needed to vent my feelings somewhere, but I never expected to be treated so kindly by all of you. Thank you. I especially want to thank anyone who sends their blessings and good desires to my fiancé. Also, I want to give some answers to the general questions some of you have had. I don't know if in my previous post I let you understand that I was thinking to forgive my brother which I'm never going to do. So for clarification, I no longer have a brother and that man died for me four years ago. Second of all, not every member of my family is thinking to forgive my brother in any way possible. It is the minority of my family that thinks this. I could easily go no contact with all those except for my parents and also clarifying that my sister is also on my side. She is the best friend of my fiance and the only one besides me that knows how much she suffered that first month after the incident. Third, for some of you that asked for what I told my mom and dad, I generally told them if I knew that my brother was in town, I would never speak to them again. 
What my brother has been doing for the last year, well, when my mom told me that he contacted her at the beginning of the pandemic, he basically moved to the other side of her country, changed his name and started taking therapy so one day he could reform. B.S. I didn't hear much more and neither my sister has asked my parents about him so that's all we know. Someone also DM'd about why my brother wasn't in jail. While I responded to that person in private, I also wanted to tell everyone here. The main reason because I beat up my brother until the point he was taken to the hospital. When I consulted a lawyer friend of mine, she told me that if I pressed charges against my brother, he could also drag me with him as I was going to be in jail for some time and also that my girlfriend needed to testify and she wasn't in the best moments for something like that. And also my priority in that moment was her. I couldn't help her if I was in jail. The best we had at the time was a restriction order for her. Also, one of the reasons I hadn't posted and updated sooner was because we both got a restriction order for my brother. I hadn't told my parents about this, so if my brother showed up at any moment, they were going to take him to the local police station. Also, some of you mentioned that the attitude that my mom had in this situation is because, like I mentioned in my previous post, my girlfriend isn't from our community, but that is not the reason I can assure you that. So now talking about everyone, what they expected, why did I respond to my family? Well, I already had been prepared to say something to all of them that were thinking to forgive my brother and for my parents, giving them an ultimatum about to pick between their son and a man who tried to rape his brother's fiance or me and their daughter. But I realized something else. While I was reading the comments of my previous post, to make my thoughts make me think about a horrible possibility that might happen. The comments were basically about how my brother was confident enough to try to rape my fiance in a house full of people and that for the reaction of my parents these days that there was the possibility that my brother had done something like that before and even worse that my parents covered it. That question shook my world again. I never thought about that possibility. It was obvious that I was thinking too much about it that my fiance asked me about what I was thinking. Note, a few hours after I posted, I told her and asked her if she wanted me to delete the post, but after reading the first comments and the rest of them, that told me that she understood why I did, and she really felt nice to all those people who sent nice messages and support for her. Thanks again. When I told her about the possibility about my brother trying or doing things like that to other people in the past, and she also got a shiver down her spine. After that, we told my sister and then began to ask other members of my family, the ones who support me, friends, and members of my community, about if they ever noticed something about my brother before the incident. So far, no one in my family remembers if my brother had that kind of attitude against family members, but friends are a different story. Some of them remember that my brother was especially kind around friends and or girlfriends of other members of my family. Sometimes a little too touchy, but not anything that far as an attempt of rape. It was until my sister reached out to a sister of an ex-girlfriend of my brother that she talked about that my brother was really strange around her family and that since my brother was dating her sister, she noticed she was extremely quiet around him. And she also mentioned that my brother acted too flirty with her. We also contacted an ex-coworker of my brother's she told us that one night after a company party, she remembers that my brother took another co-worker with him, but from what she can remember, she saw that her friend was really drunk, and that at the time, in the morning afterwards, she couldn't remember much of the last night. This whole situation made me realize that my brother was never the person I thought he was. After hearing more stories, I am now convinced that my brother is a menace for everyone around him. Since yesterday, everyone involved had a reunion of all the possible evidence against my brother. And when we were ready, we were going to show everything to everyone in our community, in social media, and to anyone we can. I also said that I haven't talked about any of this to my parents. Tomorrow morning, I'm going to drop the bomb along with in an ultimatum. And I'm also going to talk to them that if we found any probe that shows that anyone knows about the things that my brother has done, they are also going to pay the consequences. I am not going to be able to update for a while or at least not any big update about this until my brother is facing consequences. This is not how I imagine the weeks after my proposal, but this is something that we can't let slide. 
My fiance has been there for me every step, and I've done my best to be for her in all of this. I can't imagine how she feels right now, but I am so proud of her, and that she doesn't fear to face her trauma if that allows her to help others. Again, thanks to all of you who showed their support. Update 2. Hi everyone again, I know it's been a while since I last updated, but I wanted to post a complete update once the problem was solved. One more time, I want to thank everyone who has sent their good wishes to me, my fiancé, and to any other possible victim of my brother. Now to the main theme, what has happened. While the aftermath is still going on, I'm happy to tell everyone that my brother is facing justice for his actions. So back when I last updated, my fiancé, some friends, and I started to look through my brother's history searching if he had ever abused or tried to abuse any other women. And once the evidence was ready to make my brother face consequences, at the end we ended with the cases of eight different women, including my fiancé, that were somehow molested by my brother. These included ex-girlfriends, ex-co-workers, and two actual co-workers of his. I also mentioned that once we were ready, I was going to show my parents what kind of monster that they were defining, and also with that, we were going to show everyone the information through social media. But neither of those things happened like we planned, mostly because our lawyer advised because I showed my parents the information there was a possibility that my parents tried to cover my brother's back and prevent him from all the things that we had planned for him. I didn't think about that possibility at first, mostly because partly I just wanted to knock some common sense into my parents' minds, but at that point I couldn't trust them because there was the possibility that they had covered up my brother's actions before, and that spreading the information through social media was something that my brother could use in his favor by claiming defamation, and that basically would complicate things needlessly so the confrontation with my parents would have to wait. Also mentioning that during that time, I went completely no contact with them because I didn't want them to screw things over and because I couldn't trust them anymore. Here I have to mention my sister. She took one for the team and all this time she pretended to be with them in a neutral position while in reality she was helping me and my fiance. During that time, my sister learned some more things about the time my brother was gone. The main things she learned were these. After the incident and the party, my brother basically moved to the other side of the country because he had a friend over there because my family had common sense at that time and turned his back against him. When he started to live over there, he basically told everyone this history that his family had disowned him because they found out he was having an affair with his brother's girlfriend. Yes, the effer had the audacity to tell the story talking about my fiance. Since I mentioned before there was no police file because of the night of the incident, I basically sent him to the hospital, and because of that, we couldn't proceed with legal action without my brother dragging me in with him. That's why my brother was able to get a job and rebuild his life. And finally, maybe the worst part, well, it turns out during those years, my brother has a daughter, basically his daughter was the result of a one-night stand, he basically got a girl pregnant in April of 2021. They agreed to co-parent because neither of them wanted to get married. And finally, in December of that year, they had my niece. My brother introduced them to my parents and sister two weeks before all the evidence was ready. And when she gave me the notice, it was like a bowl of cold water splashing against my face. At first, I couldn't believe what my sister told me, but she showed me the pictures of them. For that instance, my world trembled again because now not only my family has to face the truth, but also his family. And then I realized that the child was another reason to continue to seek for justice because we couldn't risk her mom to be in contact with my brother. Once again, my fiance and I were there for each other. If this whole situation has been difficult for me, I can't imagine what it is for her. I am able to fully understand how it is to overcome traumatic experiences like what she lived through and be able to revive it in order to help others. The minimum I can do for her is to be with her every step in this whole process. Finally, after all this, the day arrived. My brother was in my parents' house when the police showed up, and according to my sister, it wasn't pretty. It only took the police knocking on the door for my brother to start running, and the police finally caught him. He tried to fight back with him, ended up being tased and adding the charge of aggression against a police officer. After two days in lockdown, my brother was sent to prison during the process of the trial. The trial was a whole process, in and outside the court. 
During the trial, two of the women who were assaulted by my brother broke down in tears while they were testifying. My fiance was able to maintain a straight face during her testimony, but after we were alone, she started sobbing. And I started sobbing with her, but I was able to calm her. That moment and when my parents and my sister showed up to testify were the moments I broke down. That man finally was facing justice, but he was had already done so much damage that I felt like many of the girls won't be able to fully forget, but rather learn to live with the trauma. It was the hardest week of my life. But finally, after some time, my brother was found guilty of eight charges. He is going to the prison for the rest of his life. Of course, he tried to at least drag me with him because of the excessive use of self-defense force, which were the words of his lawyer, but the judge dismissed the accusation. As for my niece, the mother was originally in denial, but after showing her the evidence, she was more than willing to help us in all of this. As for my parents and those who supported my brother, it was going to be hard to never see them again. Mostly my parents, but I can't trust them. Not anymore, and while I'm losing part of my family, my future seems bright beside the woman that I love. Now I feel like a weight has been lifted, not only for me, but for my fiance, but for all the other women who were harmed by my brother. I can only express my gratitude and admiration for all those women, and also for every person who shared a similar story in the comments of my previous posts. To all those women and men who have ever been victims of something as horrible as this, I give you my best wishes so that you can live a peaceful life. And for all those who have been afraid to speak, I can tell you that you are not alone. This situation showed me that there are more good people than bad and that there will always be someone willing to extend their hand to help. I hope that my fiance's story can reach the right ears and help to those who need it. I feel that a stage of her life has ended, but at the end, I feel like it is a new beginning for everyone who deserves it. Now that that poor excuse of a human being brother is finally sent to jail, the story is flared as concluded. Honestly, what were the family thinking trying to forgive someone for doing an act that could give somebody PTSD? I hope OP cuts his losses and has a beautiful journey with his fiance. That's all for today. If you're enjoying this story, please like the video and share your thoughts in the comments section down below. Thank you.